Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar today. My name is Corey Deharsh, and today for Advantage Educational Webinar, I'm going to be covering self-directed retirement strategies for investing in your community. Again, my name is Corey Deharsh. I've been with Advanta since 2016. I worked for about five years as a client account manager where I processed thousands of investment transactions for our clients before switching over to the business development side of the business in the beginning of 2020 or 2021 rather. And at that point, I moved to a new region in Western North Carolina, and I've been doing a lot of educational content, such as these types of webinars, going to local real estate investor groups, Chamber of Commerce, and just really putting out a lot of education and information about self-directed investing. I will have my contact information up at the end of the presentation again. So if you've not had a chance to take it down here, uh, don't worry, it'll be up again. And you'll also receive a recording of this webinar if you have signed up or if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to pause and reach out to me at your convenience. I will let all the attendees know that are active and live that I will have everyone muted for the duration of the webinar, but you can put any questions you have into the question box. If you just look at the go to webinar panel, there should be a block there titled questions. I will try to answer those as they are relevant throughout the presentation. And I will get to most questions that I do not get to during the presentation at the end after I've concluded our case studies today. Moving along, I just want to give a brief explanation and description of Advanta IRA. We are a self-directed IRA administrator that has been in business for about 20 years. We have just under 2 billion in assets under management, about 8,000 active clients. And one of the things that we have for our clients is we pair each individual with a dedicated client account manager. Again, I served in that role for about five years and that person will be your direct liaison to any questions you have, getting investments processed, or getting any investment strategies and further information about those you may be interested in pursuing. It is important that I provide this brief disclaimer that Advanta and its employees do not provide any investment advice or endorse any specific products. All information today is for educational purposes only. All parties are encouraged to consult your own attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, and do all of your own due diligence before moving forward with any specific investments or strategies. So for today's agenda, I'm going to cover who can have a self-directed account and how to get one started, what type of investment opportunities you can pursue with a self-direct IRA or a self-direct solo 401k plan, how these strategies can actually benefit yourself and simultaneously benefit and improve your community. And then I've got a bunch of case studies I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply the information I'll be providing to real life examples, pretty much drawn from existing investments that either our clients have had or that I've seen and just thought about myself as a great strategy to help my community and yours alike. And then again, we'll cover any questions that are not answered throughout the course of the webinar at the end of the webinar today. Some of the key takeaway points I'd like everyone to walk away with is that a self-directed account allows you to invest how you want to, not how you're told to from a larger wirehouse type retirement administrator. We simply follow the IRS rules and regulations and let you as the client and account holder really dive into whatever types of investments you're interested in to create that generational passive income that'll add returns into your retirement account, not only for yourself, but for your beneficiaries and hopefully, again, generations to pass on. And again, the third key takeaway point is that you are responsible for all of your due diligence. So any investment you'd like to make, it's up to you to make sure you flushed everything out and fully understand the repercussions if it doesn't go well and the benefits when it does go well. 
So there are a number of different types of self-direct plans that you could utilize. We offer traditional and Roth IRAs, which are very commonly known, simple and SEP IRAs for small business owners. You can roll over former employer plans into an IRA account or a solo or individual K plan. And we also offer health savings and education savings accounts. If you're trying to put some money aside for either your health expenses or your children's educational expenses. All of these types of plans do allow for self-direction and a custodian like Advanta IRA is here to provide that for you. Now, if this is the first time you've heard about self-directed investing or self-directed retirement accounts, that is not uncommon. In the entire US-based retirement industry, only about 4% of retirement accounts are self-directed. Typically, larger custodians don't want you to know about self-direction. They'd rather tell you a self-directed product is choosing from a number of vetted investment opportunities that they've already done their research and due diligence on where a custodian like Advanta really offers you to invest into whatever you would like, so long as you're following the IRS rules and regulations. I'll go over those briefly as well in a few slides. So one key thing I wanna bring up is that contributions are different than your earnings. While you do have an annual contribution limit to adhere to based on your earned income and a number of different factors, depending on which type of account you're setting up, the earnings that your investment makes are completely unlimited. Once you've got your money in your account and you make any investment, that investment earnings are either tax deferred or tax free if you've already paid the taxes and transition that into a Roth style account. I'm not going to go into each word on this bullet points here, but I just want to let everyone know that your earnings can grow completely tax deferred or tax free with no limit. There is limits to contributions you're able to make based on your earned income and the type of plan that you're establishing. Now specific with today's webinar in investing in your community. I really wanted to make a point to let you know, we always implore you to use your network and invest with people you know. <clears throat> it's always helpful to use your employees, use your coworkers, colleagues, use the people that you know through your chamber of commerce or rotary club or investor network that you're a part of to find deals, to do due diligence, to maybe add to something that you don't have a great expertise in, but you know and trust someone else that does. So it's always very important. And specifically with investing in your community, I did wanna bring that up one more time. Now, jumping into the rules about self-directed accounts, the only types of investments that the IRS deem to be prohibited are investing into life insurance policies, collectibles, such as antiques, alcohol, fine wine, uh, stamps, and some certain types of coins. Basically the IRS, anything they deem to be a subjective value is gonna be considered a collectible and not able to be invested by a retirement account. The only other way that they restrict your investments are prohibited transactions with disqualified persons. I will cover disqualified persons on the next slide, but it's very simple just to understand that that is basically your parents and your children, your lineal tree. The other item listed here, UBIT and UDFI, I'm not going to go into in today's webinar. Those are unrelated business income tax and unrelated debt financed income. Those are specific types of taxes that may apply in a few different investment strategies. Again, I'm not covering any of those strategies today, but I did want to outline that those are subject to retirement accounts investing that only applies to certain types of investments. And if you're interested in that, you can either look at other content that we have that targets more into those types of investments or reach out and let me know and I'll point you in the right direction for that content. And again, disqualified persons as seen by the IRS, is anyone on your lineal descendant or ascendant tree, including your spouse? So there are other relatives that are not considered disqualified, such as cousins, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, 
uh, second cousins, those are not considered disqualified individuals. So you could interact with them in a retirement investment capacity. These individuals listed here on this chart are the ones that you're not able to invest. So I've got these two slides to cover the different types of assets that you can invest into. And I've broken each down as how it could apply to investing in your community. So first we'll look at single family and multifamily homes. You can hold those types of pieces of real estate within your retirement account, which can generate affordable housing and a nice home in your community for someone to live in. And you can also participate in voucher programs such as Section 8 and those types of assistance for housing if affordable housing is an issue in your community and you're also looking to get some assistance and make sure that rental income is paid. Again, that income goes straight into your retirement account. And when you work with a system like the affordable housing type options, they help you in the context of finding your tenants potentially, depending on your area, and also making sure that you get that stable income on a monthly basis. Mobile home parks as an individual park, I'm sorry, as a park or an individual unit, a mobile home domicile can be invested by a retirement account. So you could either be part of a group ownership that owns an entire park, or you can own an individual mobile home to provide housing in your area. Syndications and private placements are larger group investments where you are one of maybe 15, 20 or more investors, each pooling money together to invest in what's typically a real estate deal. I've seen a lot of them go up in uh, communities where it may be a college or a hospital needs to provide additional housing to supplement that large area. So a syndication might be put together to put a apartment complex in an area, and you might be a, one of a pooled number of investors that are able to invest into that deal and help better your community by bringing in new, nice types of real estate. Commercial property can be owned by your retirement account and offer retail space, whether it's for a larger franchise type operation, or you can own that property. And because it's held in your retirement account, you get to choose who your tenants are. So you could really support family owned businesses and other smaller locally owned entities by providing their shop space and office front. Raw land can be invested. So if you're in a rural community, you can definitely hold raw land for either timber, farming, or other recreational pur purposes, such as you know camping. There's basically a whole world like Airbnb and VRBO in the camping industry. If you have raw land, you could participate in. And finally, for real estate assets, option contracts, which are basically you purchasing the right to buy a piece of real estate at a certain price and then selling that right to another real estate investor that can then purchase the property at that price while your retirement account is generating a profit from the amount you put in escrow to the amount you upsell that right to purchase the property at. I'll have an example of that later on if you're interested. Before I start going into these other alternative assets, I do wanna remind everyone, you can drop any questions you have into the question box. Look at your GoToWebinar tab. There's a box labeled questions. You can go ahead and drop those there and I'll answer them. If not during the webinar, I'm about to cover these other alternative assets. And then additionally, a few case studies. And I'll cover the questions either at the end or as they relate during the webinar. So as far as other alternative assets, there are a number of types of hard money lending you can do within your retirement account. The first item is secured loans, basically issuing a mortgage to someone that you know in your community that's looking to purchase a home but may not qualify for conventional lending or may just have a hard time getting a good interest rate. It is up to you as the account holder and lender to set the rates and the terms of the loan agreement. So that's something you really have the power to do. And then you would basically be securing that loan 
by whatever piece of asset, whether it's the property or other property that individual owns, by getting that recorded at your local county. Private loans, whether they're secured or not, lending to members of your community so that they can get some personal endeavors taken care of, or maybe even get their own business off the ground if they're looking for a small business loan. And again, do not qualify for conventional lending, or may just have a good relationship with someone like you as an investor that can provide them better terms. Private placement investments, similar to syndications, as I referenced on the last slide, can be made where you're basically investing into a portion of ownership, buying shares of stock of a private entity, like a bank, a smaller bank in your community that might be opening, or any type of business that is offering public ownership, your retirement account can own shares or stake in those types of companies by investing through a private placement. Startup companies, like I mentioned, can be invested by a retirement account, whether it's issuing a loan to the owner of the business trying to get started or issuing an investment amount that is considered a portion of ownership upon return or further distributions to be made at a later point in time. Tax deeds and liens help your community generate tax revenue that they're otherwise not getting from the owner of the property. And then you basically work to collect on the unpaid taxes from the owner of the property. And ultimately, you could end up owning a piece of property in your retirement account after simply acquiring a tax deed or lien for a few hundred or a few thousand dollars at auction. Owning farm animals can be done within a retirement account. So again, if you're in a rural community and you have livestock or other types of farming opportunities, you can make those investments with your retirement account to help provide locally sourced livestock or even other farming goods like fruits and vegetables through your retirement account by way of either raw land or investing into a farm with your retirement investments. And the final item I've got listed here is movie projects. Yes, you can help the arts and the artists by supporting and producing a movie project and your retirement account can generate profits off of the back end after the project's been completed, whatever profits there are, you can have a portion of that in your retirement account by making that type of investment. So at this point, I'm gonna jump into a few case studies. The first case study here is helping a startup business get up and running off the ground. So in my case study, I've got David, the investor, and Sarah, the individual in his community that's looking to start a new business. Sarah's a new neighbor, or not a new neighbor, but an existing neighbor that is looking to start a new coffee shop in her community. She speaks with David and he learns about her plans and decides he wants to invest. He's gonna put out about $10,000 of IRA funds to help Sarah get started. They discuss a few different ways they can structure this investment, whether it's ownership in the coffee shop, or in this case, they decided it would be best just for a small personal loan to Sarah, which can be secured or unsecured. We'll go ahead and say it's an unsecured loan in this case. So nothing needs to be recorded with the county. A promissory note needs to be drawn up between David and Sarah, executed by Sarah as the borrower and sent to Advanta as the retirement account custodian and administrator for safekeeping until the loan is paid off. The $10,000 loan is held at a 10% interest rate with a maturity date of 12 months, at which time Sarah will pay back in full David's retirement account. So in this strategy, Sarah receives the much needed capital to get her coffee shop off the ground and David's retirement account generates $1,000 of earnings for helping her out. These numbers are just rounded figures. You can take into account a longer term, which you would set a higher interest rate and obviously a completely different investment amount, depending on who you're working with, how much they need, how much you have available and any other stat that may be in place for your hard money loan to help start up a business.
The next case study I've got here is buying or selling an option contract. So we've got Natalie, who is a well-connected real estate investor, but she's just getting started with her retirement account investing, meaning she might not have a large balance or she might wanna test the waters with a smaller type deal before she moves into some larger projects. She finds a distressed property in a highly sought after part of town and initiates a contract to purchase the property for $150,000. Upfront, her IRA pays a $2,000 escrow deposit to get that property under contract. Natalie then reaches out within her network and finds an investor to buy the contract from her IRA for $5,000. So as this deal works out, Natalie's IRA gen generated a $3,000 profit and the buyer is now able to purchase the property for a secured $150,000 so that they can then rehab or update and rent that property out or sell it once it's improved. So not only was Natalie creating a profit and income within her retirement account, she's also helping to better her community by getting that property in the hands of the right real estate investor that's going to do well by it and either upgrade the property, maybe even demolish the property and rebuild or rezone the land for other purposes. But in any event, it was a distressed item. And now after this investment, it's becoming something more or something different in the community. I did get a question. What happens if the money is lost and the business does not succeed? Well, depends on the structure of the investment. I've tried to make sure I'm wording it and explaining that accordingly. If the loan is secured and the loan is not paid back and the business does not succeed, then you as the account holder do have the ability to go after whatever instrument was recorded with the county as the security piece to getting your value back into the retirement fund. If it is an unsecured loan, at that point, there is not a lot of recourse that you have. So it may be a little bit more risky to loan on an unsecured capacity. Those are typically deals you would do with someone you're very, very well familiar with and very trusting of or trusting to. But again, depending on the structure of the investment, you could be at a complete loss if that business does not succeed. You could have some tangible assets that you can go after if there's something recorded. So the next investment that I'm gonna go over is investing into a syndication. This type of investment is where you're pooling your money, money with other investors to create a larger project that you potentially could not fund or invest as a one alone individual investor. So in this case, we've got John who has over $100,000 in an IRA with a larger custodian. He connects with investor Jane through his local chamber of commerce or local investor network. And Jane has put together a private offering to purchase and upgrade a local distressed apartment building. I'm sure most of us in our communities have seen those old dilapidated buildings and they're typically unsightly. And you notice how many doors there are. They can turn into maybe housing for travelers or a different type of housing to support your community. And that's all something that can benefit from an investor standpoint. So Jane shows John the subscription documents and the prospectus so that he can conduct his due diligence on the deal, basically learning about the property, learning about the plans for the property, learning about the expected returns and things of that nature. And once he's reviewed it all, he does decide he wants to invest. So John opens up a self-direct account with Advanta, completes a transfer to move the money from a larger custodian like Merrill Lynch, to a self-direct account at Advanta. And then Advanta IRA submits the paperwork, lets John know when the funds arrive, and then works with John to get the actual investment processed. So the investment is going to be funded in the name of John's Advanta account, and it's gonna be tied to Advanta's trust tax ID, not John's personal social, so that he will have no direct personal tax implications for this investment. 
The client account manager at Advanta signs all the subscription documents after John's approved everything and sends out the money for the deal. Moving forward, Jane and her team pays 8% preferred distributions to all subscribers, which boils down to $8,000 per year for John's investment. And in year five, the project is refinanced and John receives a lump sum payout of his initial investment of $130,000. So over the course of that five years, by making this syndication investment, John's IRA has earned a total of 70,000, that's 40 in preferred distributions and a $30,000 profit at the final payout that is either completely grown tax-free if it's in a Roth IRA or tax deferred, meaning he pays the tax later on when he distributes the money out of the account and no capital gains or taxes to be paid at that point in time when John receives the payout and the money back into his retirement account. So the final case study I've got today is purchasing real estate. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there are many of different ways to hold real estate, single family homes, multifamily homes, mobile home units, mobile home communities, and even commercial property. For this case study, we're just gonna look at a single family rental unit. So I've got investor John, who's got about 150,000 in a former employer's 401k plan. And he wants to use that money to purchase a rental property down the street from his house. The property he's found is valued at about $100,000. So this is how it goes. John opens up and funds a Advanta account, finds the property, makes the offer to purchase the property and submits the purchase paperwork to Advanta marked as read and approved. Advanta works with the closing agent to ensure that all of the titling on the paperwork is in the name of John's retirement account, executes all that paperwork, sends out the executed closing documents, and wires the funds to the closing table. We will then hold the deed and copies of all documents for record keeping purposes and receive all income and pay all expenses of this property. So with real estate specifically, there's a few additional aspects that I want to make sure I outline. When property is owned by a retirement account, all of the cash flow comes in and out of that retirement account. So the IRA owner does select who rents the property, but the renter does need to send the funds to Advanta. The IRA owner also decides who rents and sets up the lease agreement, but Advanta on behalf of the retirement account holder actually signs the lease agreement and executes any documentation on behalf of the property owner. You can employ property management. It is additional cost, obviously, but if that's something you'd prefer to do rather than coordinating directly as the account holder and property owner with Advanta, you can have a property management third party in place that basically handles everything and sends all final proceeds back into your retirement account on a timeline that you set up with them. As far as managing the property, the retirement account holder cannot do any sweat equity, meaning any manual labor on the property. So all of that type of thing must be outsourced to qualified professionals. It could be a local handyman, it could be a non-disqualified person. Basically anyone that is not yourself or disqualified persons can conduct the type of maintenance needing to be done on your IRA owned property. And then again, any expenses need to be paid using the retirement account funds. We do have a client online portal that you can easily access 24 seven to submit payment requests, or you could email those types of requests directly to your account manager, and we will get those paid the following day. Otherwise, if you have a property manager in place, they may hold their own portion of your proceeds so that they can pay those types of expenses and then send any additional cash after that type of thing has been covered. I had a question just come in. Can I create an LLC for these investments and invest not as an individual or a retirement account? Yes, you can definitely utilize an LLC 
Most cases we see individuals set up a single member LLC, which is also known as the checkbook IRA strategy. That's something you could find more information on either at our website or our YouTube page. I've done webinars on the checkbook control. I've done webinars on how to set it up, how to utilize it. Um, and a lot of different things can also be found on our website. But if there is a purpose that you want that LLC for either an individual property or to consolidate a lot of your investments through, yes, that can be done. And it can be done with multiple members as well. I'm just specifically referring to single member LLC based on the benefits and the specific scenario at play here. Jumping back in to the next slide. In this investment strategy, the property that was purchased was rented for $1,250 for two years. That generates $30,000 of income. And then John sells the property for $150,000, making a $50,000 profit. Again, if you recall from the first slide, the property was purchased at $100,000. So that $50,000 plus the $30,000 is $80,000 of profit over the course of two years that John does not have to pay taxes on as far as capital gains tax or any income tax. If it's a Roth account, he never has to pay taxes on that money because it was generated from an account that was already taxed money. And if it's a traditional account, he may have to pay taxes on those profits when he distributes them later on at retirement age. So all of that $80,000 of profit can either go into other investment deals, he can roll it into the next property purchase and maybe buy a little bit more expensive of a property or a property in a different area if he's looking to help the other side of town or another community. It's all money in the retirement account that can be utilized for new purposes now that it's been returned. I do wanna take a quick second to let everyone know about our educational content. We do put on events like seminars, webinars like this one, and other networking sessions. So go ahead and check out Advanta's events tab on our website to see when our next event is that you're interested in, whether it's in your local area or digitally accessible. We have a very robust video library on YouTube. You can go to our YouTube channel and check out videos on other investment strategies with experts in a lot of different subject areas and your Advanta IRA experts as well. And if you're interested in retirement investing news in general, we do have a blog so you can go ahead and sign up for that on our website for industry related news to retirement account investors. It is very easy to get started with an Advanta account. It only takes about 15 minutes to fill out our application. We pair you with a client account manager, like I mentioned earlier, and that person will be your one point of contact. So you don't have to worry about reaching and dealing with 20 different people, depending on what time you're calling or what type of item you're calling for. We pair you with one person that helps with all of your needs and you develop a relationship with them to make things simple for you and for our team. You can fund your account with cash contributions for the current or previous calendar year up to tax filing deadline, transfers from existing accounts or rollovers from previous employer plans. And once your account is opened and funded, you can start investing into any of the types of investments I've talked about today and a number of additional ones that I didn't get to that don't necessarily relate to investing in your community, but do have the ability to generate large profits of either tax-free or tax-deferred money. I've got one additional question here that I will go over. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to drop them now. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to my contact information again as I get through this final question. And if nothing else comes up, we will conclude the session here in the next few moments. That final question I'm looking at, what are the tax implications for the retirement funds if the investment in any of these cases was not successful? So the tax implications are really null and void. When you invest with the retirement account, the account in itself is a disregarded entity for tax purposes. So there is no tax 
write off or benefit when an investment made in your retirement account is not successful. That is part of the benefit and or the detriment of investing with retirement account. Again, as I covered on a few different slides and with a few of the strategies, you are not subject to capital gains tax and income tax on the money you generate within a retirement account unless you're taking that money as distribution later on in life or even taking it as an early distribution, which may be subject to some penalties and early transfer out or termination fees in that context. But when you make an investment with a retirement account, because the account is a disregarded entity for tax purposes, there are no write-offs or uh, implications, if you will, to be had. I did get an additional question. Can you mix retirement funds in normal funds from other investors? So yes, you can partner either with yourself or with other investors so that you can make an investment together. For example, owning a piece of real estate, when you fill out the contract for the real estate purchase, you can purchase at different ownership percentages, which are directly correlated to the dollar amount that each of those investors has to put into the investment. So for my example earlier, with a $100,000 rental property purchase, you can buy 70,000 and 70% 70 within a retirement account and you may have an investment partner that has 30,000 that would like to own 30% of that property. Now, moving forward, all the expenses and income will have to be split at that same ownership percentage. So if you're making $1,000 of rental income on that property, 700 of it goes into your retirement account and 300 of it is due to your investment partner that owns the 30%. Likewise, if you have a expense to pay, let's say a $1,000 air conditioning bill, 700 of it must come out of the retirement account and 300 of it must go to or come from rather the other investor that you're working with. And a final question. So if your retirement, in my case, 401k is lost, I don't have to pay back the retirement plan. So if you make an investment with an IRA or a 401k and that investment does not pan out, let's just say you loan on an unsecured basis and the investor lost the money, ran off with the money, the investment failed, whatever happens, you're not able to recoup that money. Uh, basically, what we would do is get proper documentation from you and or your CPA or attorney to indicate that the investment was not successful and we would execute a sale transaction to remove that investment from the account at a zero value or whatever value you are able to recoup and that is the way the transaction would take place it would be written off or executed with whatever funds you are able to recoup as the full sale to remove the investment off of your records. But again, there's no tax implications for that. It's just an investment that's either succeeded or hasn't succeeded or succeeded, but not in a way or fully uh, to the manner of the investment being made. Are there parameters allocation limits for alternative investments as a percentage of your portfolio? No, as far as retirement investing, you can invest 100% of your self-direct account into any investment you'd like. I don't know as a manner of syndication investing if they have a specific parameter. The only parameter that I'm familiar with that may apply is if you have a solo 401k account, there's a type of loan that you can actually loan to yourself called a qualified participant loan. And there is a parameter of that. It can only be $50,000 or 50% 50 of your account value, whichever is lesser. But as far as making an investment into real estate or syndications or any other private equity or lending, Advanta does not hold a restriction, nor does the IRS, as far as a percentage of your portfolio able to be invested. Is the cost a one-time fee or different for different investors? So Advanta's costs are basically set up where you have an option to choose from a fee based on the total number of assets per each asset or a fee based on the total portfolio value you have with us. 
Uh, to get more in depth with that, I would really look to have you contact us directly. We can definitely go over those questions and provide you our application and our fee agreement document with that. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude and wrap up. So thank everyone for participating today. If there is a question or two that I have not gotten to, we will review that and we will get back in touch with you as soon as possible. Again, if you've signed up, please feel free to check out our other webinars and our other content. We put out typically two webinars a week along with other additional content that you can check out for any investment strategies you're interested in. Thank you so much for your time and look to speak with you soon.